Hey everyone, Kristen Som here, and I was asked to show how to do a certain technique. And since I want to show you more of Embrilliance Essentials and also do a comparison between Embrilliance Essentials and So What Pro, I thought this is a really good opportunity. So we are working as a group on the Lucky Us Pillow by Kimberbell. And I've been asked how to take out the stitching underneath the vase in our next block. So that's a personal preference. Honestly, I don't care about the stitching underneath the block, but some do. Um, so if you remember from the Love Notes quilt, we had the same issue. There were some that wanted to not have any quilting under their jar of hearts. So I showed a couple ways of how to do that. And so this is the same scenario. So I'm just going to show you um, what I've learned and keep in mind that I am brand new to Embrilliance Essentials and just learning my way through and sharing what I learn as I go so that we can go through it together and learn and enjoy the process and, and check out software. So um, I've used Sew It Pro for several years and both softwares from what I've seen so far have um, very good features, both of them, very good. And some are just more advanced on some things. And so this is another one to test out. So I showed a little bit about wording. I'm going to show more, but wording in Brilliance is a game changer. Like it's amazing. But I noticed that there are a few things, uh, one thing in particular that's lacking on Embrilliance Essentials, but I figured out a way around it. So Let's go ahead and talk about this. So um, when you open in Brilliance, I, I already had it opened and this is the project there we're working on now. I did a shirt and some in the group are doing a shirt as well. So that's what has come up. So I am going to go to file new page and it, it opens up the uh, hoop that you used last, which I think mine was oh, 06 by 10. Perfect. That's what I need. All right, so I am going to start by opening up a quilting design. You can do it from file open, you can do it from merge, um, either way. Okay, so I'm gonna start by opening up my quilting design and I've got it on PC, my D drive, and then documents, embroidery files, embroidery, Kimberbell quilting, and I am using plaid as my quilting design. So you see all I did is click on the folder and then all of these different designs pop up or different sizes of that design. So I, that's how I have mine saved. Um, but that's one nice thing about in Brilliance, instead of just a bunch of words, it shows you the picture. So that's helpful. So I'm going to open the four by eight plaid. I double click on it and it brings it to the center of my hoop. All right. Now, I also want to bring in um, a file from the Lucky Us pillow. So I'm going to go to this merge up here, and then um, my desktop is where I have it. All right, so Lucky Us embroidery files, and then I'm using Pez for the Brother Machine, and all of the designs in that folder start showing up. So I know I want this one that is the vase. Um, so I'm going to double click on that and it goes to the center. All right. So um, one thing is that I want to put my vase above my quilting just for this tutorial or to be able to take out those the stitches is what my plan is. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm just using the little mouse button on the little roller on my mouse and to zoom in and out. There's other ways to do it too. There's quite a few actually. So there's this bar. You can use this bar over here and you can use this to move up and down on your screen. Or there's this button here. I don't know the names of anything yet, so bear with me. But if I hit this A button, it shows like all the stitches maybe. I'm not sure if that's what that means. Um, this H I think is hoop. This S, so I really like this one, this S, if you click anywhere on the picture that shows up, so look at this, you can zoom in on a certain area and that's really helpful. Like you can, it's a great zoom feature to be able to zoom in if you wanted to see a certain part. So like for now, I want to show you the vase. So the vase right here, if I click, 
here. Excuse the door banging. Um, so right here. So see these little quilting design, the quilting underneath the vase. Some people want to not see the quilting. And that's pretty easy to do. It's not super easy, but it's kind of tedious is what it is. It's not hard, but it's a little tedious um, in both software programs. So um, I am going to start by moving the clover up above my quilting just so that I can it will stand out. So I'm if I right click on this, it says move to first. So I'm just going to do that and then it's right up there. And then if I click on this little arrow button here, it's got all of the parts of this um, design. And I don't want all the parts for this um, tutorial. So I am just going to click on parts like the, this is the stems of the flower and I'm going to click the delete button on my keyboard. So look at how easy this is. I do want that part. I'm going to just click on items and hit the delete button and they're gone super fast, super easy. This part I will say is quite a bit faster than so what pro. All right, delete, delete, delete. All right, I want that vase. It's got a placement and a tack down of the vase and I only need one for my purpose. So I am going to delete this one. All right, so I have the vase and I've got my quilting. So to be able to take out these stitches, and Brilliance Essentials does not have the eraser tool that Sew so It Pro does. And I like the eraser tool. Um, it, it can be tedious and it can be difficult. And I'll show you, um, you have to be super careful when you are using the eraser tool because if you come too close to the part you wanna keep, you have to start all over. So um, if you're using the eraser tool on Sew It Pro, not in Brilliance Essentials, but on Sew It Pro, if you have a design like we did the polar bear and we wanted just his scarf, but it was attached to the hat. Well, the hat and the scarf were in two different areas. So hitting erase and just taking out that hat was super easy. And that would be a nice to have, in my op opinion, for Brilliance Essentials. It doesn't have that. Um, it has a different way and I'll show you how to do that. And this is just, again, me starting as a newbie learning this. So there may be other ways, but this is what I have found. Um, but I also found that in another in Brilliance program, I think it was called Enthusiast, they have, um, the lasso tool, which so what pro has lasso tool as well. And that can be easy for deleting things. But again, inside of this little, um, base, I think the lasso tool would be difficult. The eraser actually would be, I'll show you. All right. So let's go ahead and see how to do it in Brilliance essentials. So here's what I did. If I go up here to this, um, stitch simulator and I am going to run through here then you can see so since we started with the vase see there's our vase and then we're going to run through all of these placement and tack down boxes and then this green part is our quilting so right here when it gets to the vase so see right there so if I stop there and then I advance stitch by stitch, so you saw all I did before was I was taking this, um, this little button here and moving it across in the teal area because that's our quilting. If I do this, these buttons, it just does stitch by stitch. All right, so I can get all the way to the vase and then I can click stop and it brings up this thread color that I can change the thread color. So I'm going to just change to a darker color. It doesn't matter what color. And see how the, the start of our quilting is that teal color and then the rest is, has now, you can see it up here too, it's all turned brown. So I'm gonna just run through this stimula simulator again really quickly just by pulling it over here because I know now where it is, where that quilting is. And so if I've gone over, so see I've gone a little too far, I can hit this back button and then hit stop 
again and there comes up my thread color so I'm going to go back to a lighter color it doesn't matter what I just want it to be able to stand out light from dark so now all the rest of those stitches have turned in that light color and the one here inside of the vase is brown so that makes it really easy so if I just keep going through this and when it whenever it gets to the vase so see you can see I'm at the vase again and I'm just going to advance until I get to the jar, the vase, sorry, the vase, um, and then hit the stop button. And then, like I said before, you can just change to whatever color, something that's gonna stand out a bit. And it does all of the rest of the colors, but that makes it easy for us to just bring this over quick. And then all you're doing is whenever the ones that are in the jar, let me see, that's a little too far. So right there, hit stop go to a lighter color and then run through the simulator down to the next part so see it the see the line inside of that box it changes or it's not changing it goes into the vase so that tells us where we are on the vase i'm going to hit stop here and then go to brown say okay run through so you can see it's a little tedious but it's easy to do and you'll see on the the ver the soa pro if we used that one that that's not super simple either so i'm going to just show you and like i said there it both of them are an easy thing it's just time consuming because you have to be precise so all i'm doing is when i get close to the vase I'm advancing by one stitch at a time and then I click stop and then change it to a darker color so that it stands out and then run back through the simulator and then you just keep doing this until there aren't stitches see that one went through see how it goes through there in that window All right, so now we have all the ones that are going that direction, but it's going to come back through. So we're going to do it again. See, brown. What I should have done is set a timer to see how long it takes. So on the first one that I did, I tested this. Um, I think it took like 10 to 15 minutes. So you just need a little bit of time. To be able to work on this if this is something that is important to you if you want your quilting not to be in that vase then you have to work at it a little bit it's totally up to you i will say that it's easier if you're not talking and concentrating just on the project that obviously makes it a little bit easier so you'll probably be able to do this faster and easier So like I said, all I'm doing is when it gets to the vase, I change the color and then I go back to the simulator to the next part. So see it's going out of the vase here, then I know that I want to go back to that lighter color. And I'll show you why we're changing the color. You probably have already figured it out, but this is just the way that I saw of how I can find the stitches that need to be deleted. And they don't need to be. This is totally optional. And it doesn't matter what color you change the stitches to. It's just whatever's going to stand out to you. I did a lighter color versus a darker color just so that I can see them easily. And back to a lighter color. And I think we probably have them all. Let's just scroll to the ending here. Yep. All right, so that is all of the stitches. Now they all of the ones that are inside of the vase are brown. So next what we're gonna do is go out of the stitch simulator by clicking on that stitch simulator button up here. And then we are going to click on the quilting design over on that little um, opening bar. Let's see make that no all right and then when you do this you're just quickly looking through all of the quilting designs so those are our tack down stitches and this is our quilting here so see there's a brown so I'm just going to click the delete button 
And then every time I find a brown one, make sure it's the brown. You don't want to delete your teal colored ones or whichever color are the outside ones. You're just looking for the brown ones because we know that the brown ones on mine anyway are the ones that are inside of the vase. And if you do cl uh, click on the wrong one by mistake, you can always just hit the undo button. The undo button is right up here. So I'm just looking for those ones that are inside. Looks like there's one more. Okay, so see all those stitches inside of the vase are now gone. So what I would do now is I would go and take delete this. And then see I have my plaid and I can go to file save as right now if I choose. You don't have to at this point, but you could. You could say save as and then say um, so we're in the tulip so we're in my last thing that I saved so if I go I'm just gonna go to my desktop and click empty vase whatever you want to save it as doesn't matter all right and then remember now so we have our quilting design but we want to load back in that vase so we would just go to the merge over here and bring in that design again that is the vase and flowers double click on that and look we've got our plaid with our empty vase with the flowers you can't see the quilting under the vase done that was really easy it's just tedious but that's how it is. All right, so then I would go to File, Save As, and I'm gonna say Empty Vase with Quilting, something just so that it stands out different than the one that I saved before. And like I said, you wouldn't need to actually save your, because you're probably not ever gonna use that plaid design without the, part for the vase again but just as a you know I worked hard on it I'm going to save it just in case all right so that one is done so I want to show you a comparison but before I do that actually I want to show you um, some people were asking me how to load fonts in BX so you can see I had to re-download a bunch of mine because I had never used BX fonts before. So I re-downloaded them. I haven't had a chance yet to load them. So I'm going to quickly show you how. So what is this one? Monte Carlo. So all you do is you double click on your font that you downloaded. You want to extract the files. So I just click extract all on a Mac, I don't know, but however you do your extraction, you make sure to ex open up the folder and extract the files. It will not work on a zipped folder. All right, so one thing is I did this once before and I noticed it didn't, yeah, it didn't extract my BX folder. So let me do that one specifically. So someone asked me, so look at, look at how easy this is. Let me point this out. So all of those fonts, so there are five different sizes and 26 letters, whatever it is. Um, all of those are in the, just this tiny thing, right? Just, I don't have to sit there and bring over every single letter in every single size. It, the BX fonts, it comes up with these five items. And now watch, if I open my Embrilliance, I don't know if I have to have a new page. I don't think I do, let's try it. So if I highlight all of these and bring it over, look at this. This has now been installed. This has now been installed. This has now been installed. Like how easy was that? Open your zipped folder, drag and drop onto your workspace, and now you have all of these fonts. So if I went up here to create letters, this little A here, it'll open up to the, I, don't, I think the last one that you used, it will open. And then what was it called? Like cookies, something almond cookies. Look at how easy was that? <laughs> so all those folders that are very, very messy on my desktop right now will be gone, you know, in, as soon as I just have a few minutes to uh, 
open them all up, extract them and put them into um, the workspace and boom, it installs them for you. So that's super, super cool. There are several things about Embrilliance Essentials that I'm extremely impressed with. Like that part is great. I would like it if it had the eraser tool, I'll tell you. But I don't want you to think that that eraser tool is an end all and super easy because I made it look really easy because we, I showed you how to just quickly erase, but on this vase, it's going to take some time. So let me show you exactly how we did this using so a pro so you, just for a simple comparison okay so open your so what pro if you have so what pro or whatever embroidery software that you're using and same thing, we're gonna open up the plaid file. All right, and on Sew so It Pro, it automatically opens to a five by seven. I think you can actually change that in settings. I never did, so not super sure about that, but adjust hoop size up here, and then I'm gonna open up my six by 10. All right, and then you click the shift button and the mouse wheel to be able to zoom out and see the entire hoop. All right, so we have the five steps of the quilting. Now we're gonna merge in, file merge, and bring in that vase. All right, so clovers and flowers. So see, this is what I was telling you. In, in So What Pro, you just see a bunch of names and you have to know which one or just click around until you find it. Um, but it's called clovers and flowers, so I'm gonna click open and it goes right to the center. All right, now remember I was saying that if we bring the, the vase up to the top, that that makes it easiest to be able to see um, over the quilting. So moving everything up to the top um, in this program is, is, it takes longer. Like the other one you saw, I just right click on it and clicked um, move to top. So on this, you'd have to do every single one. And because the other one had where this is a design and then within that, there's the tier of the, the items within that design. This one just has all of the steps. So you can't just grab it and pull it. And one thing I forgot to show you is on Embrilliance, you can actually click everything and um, move it over or, or copy it. That was a really great feature. I have not found, so you saw, I can do it from the bottom, but I can't, it doesn't let me, if I try to like say, um, move it, do anything like that, it doesn't let me do it. And I can't seem to do it. I was trying this the other day. I can't do it from anywhere but from the bottom. I don't know why that is. So that's just a weird thing. So keep in mind, I've had Sew It Pro for several years, but I know the basics of Sew It Pro. There are some things, the wording frustrated me, so I never really bothered with, with learning the wording on Sew It Pro, but there are good features. So let me show you. All right, so we want to have um, the vase up at the top over the quilting. So you could click on each one of these and move them down, or you could, there's a lot more of this step so to move them up. So instead what I'm gonna do is just go through and delete um, a bunch of them first. So all I'm doing is I'm cli right clicking, delete thread, and I want that one, I don't care. All right, so I'm just clicking delete thread so that I can easily move them because it's there's too many parts to to move them. So I'm just going to delete them all now. Right click, delete thread, right click, delete thread. So now we have the five steps of the quilting and then the sixth one is our vase. So I'm just going to move the vase up to the top. So I click shift and click on it and move it up. And then we have the vase. So we can zoom in shift and zoom in and then move this button down here so that we can see this, these are the quilting designs within the vase and we're going to want to zoom in a lot to utilize that 
um, eraser tool. So um, when we did that polar bear, we we changed, we took out his, um, we wanted to save just the scarf, but the scarf was attached to a hat. And so it was really easy to just take the eraser tool and erase the hat because it was far away from the scarf. We want to um, use the eraser tool within this limited vase. So it's a little bit harder. So we're gonna want to be really precise. So we're gonna open up this cutting toolbar and we're gonna click on the eraser tool. And then like you, like you can see, there are different sizes of the eraser tool all the way down to a tiny, tiny one that will just take a long time. So you can use the big one to start out with. That would save some time. But I wanna warn you, if you were to, oops, I went over this, darn. Well, you would have to click close and don't perform the erases. Um, what you could do to save on that, like you you just wanna be super, super precise and, and um, get it just right because you could be doing this for 10, 15 minutes and get it all just right and then go off the edge and you, you've basically ruined everything that you did. So you would want to save along the way and the only way to save is to um, do what I just did where I said um, close out the cutting toolbar and then um, er let it erase and then go back into that cutting toolbar and start more on the next parts. So if you're doing something that's taking a long time, I would recommend doing that where you take uh, do it in steps. All right, so here we are. So we're going to go to that cutting toolbar, go to erase. And like I said, you can start with the big eraser to get um, the parts that aren't near the edges because you don't want to get the part that you want to keep otherwise you have to start over bigger parts and I'm just dragging around the eraser and you have to make sure to get every last bit so when we were working on that polar bear several people were saying oh darn I missed a step or I missed a part of it or something and then it will still stitch that obviously all right so this is what I was saying once you have a big part done if you hit close and yes you want to perform those erases then it's like saving as you're working basically so we still have obviously all these parts that are near the edge and so we have to go back in and click the cutting toolbar and the eraser and then go down to a smaller one and you can zoom in because we want to get all these every single little bit and don't get the edge of the vase at all so the eraser toolbar or the eraser item in the cutting toolbar is really helpful for things that are further away from the design. For the things that you have to get really close to the edge, obviously you have to just have a really steady hand and be really, really precise and careful to not hit the edge. So personally, I would like it if in Brilliance had a eraser. Um, just for those instances when um, it's something that's quick and easy to erase. That would be a nice to have. So it is obviously hard to see um, the tiny little bits. So you have to really, because you have to get every last little bit or it's going to stitch it. All right, I'm going to save just and then come back in. So I just hit close and then yes, I do want to perform those erases and you can see there's still more, but I just wanted to save the work that we've already done. All right, and then go back to the cutting toolbar, the eraser.
All right, I think that's about as good as it's going to get. Close, yes, perform erases. So here is our vase with the eraser tool. And you would just click on that, oops, sorry, the first one, the base, and click delete thread. And then you've got your um, plaid without the vase. So I'm just going to save as. Um, Base empty. All right, and then you would bring in um, file merge and bring in the design uh, clovers and flowers. Okay, and then you would do a file save as. All right, and then you've got your five steps of your quilting and then all the steps of your base. And there is no um, there's no quilting inside of your vase, so the outcome is is pretty close to the same, um, and both are tedious. It it just is what it is. But there there are benefits to both. So I like having an eraser tool. I wouldn't. I don't necessarily prefer it on this vase. All right, let me show you a quick comparison on wording. So I will say that wording and brilliance is far superior. So I showed you, you can take a folder and extract it. And then once you have the extracted BX fonts, you just drag them onto the workplace folder and it installs immediately. It, you don't have to take each letter over. Um, so here is our extracted font. I would just click on these BX fonts, bring them over to this workplace, and you can see, boom, they're installed. And you say, okay. So if I were to go up here, I can change this. I'm, I clicked on this A, create letters. And then that font that I just installed, I think it was called Sarah. Yep, Sarah. All right, and then type whatever you want. Um, or let's do it. We've I showed you before with a cursive font. Let me show you with a regular. All right, so change the wording. Type in whatever you want and hit return. And then there's your name. So when you have the name in, you can do all kinds of things to it and like so easily. So say that I just want to um, change the curve. Here's a curve, top curve, bring it up a little, or you can do the bottom curve. So that like, imagine that you've got a design there and you wanna just curve it around. The other thing you can do easily is a text on a circle. So this, you would just change the radius. Look at how easy that was. Oh my gosh. So let me show you in Sew What Pro. And I'll, I'll tell you, I never got the hang of doing this with Sew What Pro. So if I do a new, I would go to desktop, find the design. All right, so you would find the first letter of the name that you want to do. Oh, it doesn't, this one doesn't come with fonts already. So I'm just going to pick this, the one that I just um, opened. All right. So pick your first letter. Mine is obviously a C. And then we are going to go to this insert lettering from info pane. You can't type a name on here, but you can insert each letter so you would just, let's start by moving this one over. Let's change our hoop size. Okay, so move a letter over and then bring the next letter over. And then just keep typing on the letters that you want. And then you can 
move each letter so that they're together. Okay, so I've got my name here. Um, don't group it. My, my first instinct is to group it so that it'll all stay together. But if you group it, then you can't um, make them curve or do anything like that. So there's this button up here, arrange text on a curve. And like I said, just a warning. I know, I know. Hold on. Um, let's close out of this info screen. All right, so we've got our seven... Um, letters click on that and then click arrange text on a curve and see this is why i i have i had trouble with it i i never really got the hang of it on so what pro um and i'm sure that there are tutorials on how to do it um but i found it not easy to understand so you can do vertical along a curve um so you can change the amount of the I don't know um so like I said I I had trouble with this I don't understand why part of the letters go up here why it doesn't it you can't just on, on in brilliance they definitely won the game on how to do um texting on a curve. So what I always ended up doing when I was using undo, um, I would just move them myself. Like if the, I would just move the letters how I wanted them. Um, because I never got the hang of this arranged text on a curve. Um, but I'm sure that there are tutorials and such. I don't know. <laughs> okay, for those that want to take out the uh, quilting from the inside of the vase and you want to do it on your machine instead of software, if you have um, one of the high-end machines, there is very likely a way. So on the Dream Machine and Solaris and uh, Luminaire and I'm sure some others, they have this My Design Center. And I almost never use this, so just bear with me, but um, this is what I'm finding. All right, so if you were to, I'm going to be looking around my phone too, so... Um, so say that you, let's start by, sorry, um, go to embroider and click on the vase. So you would have to start with your vase. You would have to um, delete all the other steps, I believe. There may be another way, but um, the, the easiest way that I saw is by deleting all of the steps and just having the vase so that you can make a stamp out of the vase. There's probably another way, but um, I'm going to use this one. All right, so I would hit set and then go to edit. And um, this little button here makes a stamp. So you would click that and then, excuse my dogs, and then save it. Um, this like brings it to my design center and so that you can recall it later from your design center in your stamp. So it's showing you right here that you would go to your stamps after to find the little stamp you just made. So we're saying okay. And then we will go out of this, if I recall, because we already made a stamp. So go to embroider and then um, back to my design center right here. And we're going to start by making a square. So this shapes button, 
will let us make a square and then we want to size it. So we know that we want a quilting design that's four by eight. So how, oh, size, the size button. And then we can just change the size. So it says right up here that it's 6.19 by 6.19. We want it to be four by eight. So I am going to just go up. Sorry for the glare. Um, and I'm just going to make it eight inches and then we want the other part of it to be four. So that would be the width here and we want it smaller. So we're gonna bring it down to four. All right, so we have four by eight. Again, sorry for the glare, four by eight. And say, okay. So we've got our four by eight square, uh, rectangle, sorry. And then we're gonna go back to this shapes button. And there's this button up here has the little stamp button, this one. So we're gonna click on that. And then you can see we, we made a vase, an empty vase. I did it a couple of times. All right, so click OK. And there we have our vase and our four by eight box. So to be able to do quilting, you just a warning, you can't bring in quilting from um, like Kimberbell or, or any designer. It has to be quilting that is on your machine to be able to utilize the design center, my design center it's called. All right, so I would click this little bucket that has a paper behind it, it looks like, and then click the paper looking button and go here to the stippling options and click select and you can see all of your options. So this one is probably the closest to a plaid, um, but you can see your options. And if you have a Solaris or a Luminaire, you have, I think twice as many uh, quilting designs as I do, but I'm just gonna use this one and say okay all right and then you can change the color of it but it doesn't matter so i'm going to say okay so here's the cool part so if i i have it selected here you can see the quilting design that i chose so if i click in here boom there's your quilting so it's within the four by eight box and it's not within the stamp so that's how you would do this um then you would click you would go ahead and um, embroider this part or you could probably import the clover and vase uh, design from here I'm sure you could probably do that but or you could do this and then go back to your home screen and load in the clover and flowers and um, do it right on top because this is just a stamp so that's how you would do it on your machine if you have one of the machines that has my design center or another brand if there there is some sort of design center in there there might be this option um, or software software is always an easy option in my opinion so there's three ways of doing it that i know of there could be more <laughs> And after you exit out of Design Center and you've got it shown here on the screen, there is an add button down at the bottom and you could add the next design on top of that so that you could do them all at once. Set and boom. Woohoo! That's pretty cool.